Speak up. Stimmen aus Südasien. Speak up. Voices from South Asia. Today I will talk to Swati Kamble, who introduces herself as a Dalit activist and as an intersectional feminist. She completed her doctoral research at the University of Geneva, which focused on the impact of Dalit women's activism on the policy process in Maharashtra. Our topic today is Dalit feminism. What is your understanding of Dalit feminism? Can you please explain what it is and what the key issues are? Uh, thank you very much, Krista. So first of all, I will just give a, a note uh, to say that Dalit is a very contested term and feminism within Dalit activist and intellectual circles is again a very contested ideology territory. Having said that, how do Dalit women themselves from different spect uh, uh, and spaces, uh, Dalit women who are toiling, who are in the rural parts, who are living in the slums um, and mobilizing for their rights in the grassroots, Dalit women uh, from various regions uh, of India, Dalit women going into the university spaces, academics, researchers, these are all the diversities of Dalit women who define themselves in a unique way. So if I were to say Dalit feminism, I would say there are a good number of Dalit women who would say that we are, we are anti-caste beings. We are Dalit women who oppose anti-caste and in our ideology, we also oppose patriarchy. So we do not really need a feminism that is let's say, created in the spaces that are upper caste. The theorization and invention of feminism that is emerged in the upper caste knowledge hubs, be it up, upper caste um, organizations, be it upper caste uh, academic spaces. So Dalit women, if you talk to them, activists uh, would reject this uh, feminism, so to say, that is emerging from mainstream upper caste location. But if you will talk to other young uh, digital activists who are understanding of feminism in a more broader understanding of feminism that has emerged from the margin, from the global south, feminism from black uh, feminist thinking and thought, critical race theorist point of view, that's the feminism that a lot of Dalit women, uh, such as myself, are ascribing to our owning and seeing that the upper caste feminism that comes to us, which gets defined as feminism, is in fact not feminism. The feminism is what the grassroots women, when they are speaking truth to power, when they are standing up for their rights, what they are doing is also feminism and is in fact democratizing this narrow definition of feminism as we know today. So would you say the upper caste feminism is not feminism or is it not the feminism of Dalit women? No, I would say that we do not need this distinction. I would say that when you are doing feminism uh, or doing anti-caste work, if it is not intersectional, if it is not engaging with caste, class, um, and other systems of oppression, be it, you know, the religious minorities issues currently that are on the rife in India, your feminism falls short. So it, it is not feminism, in my opinion. It is not. What has been going on, I'm sorry, is that in the name of feminism, there has been an assumption. There has been, okay, if you are fighting for the rights of women, you will automatically fight for the rights of others who are oppressed. And that is, in fact, not the case. It should be. And that's what feminism should mean. So can you please say again, what is the challenge of Dalit feminism towards mainstream or upper caste feminism? Yes. So uh, the first challenge is that uh, there shouldn't be frozen in guilt reaction that when Dalit women are talking for themselves, be it in academia, be it as uh, 
poor Dalit women fighting for their rights, look at it as a feminism. Listen to them, open up spaces for them. You know, when they are taking the spaces, don't feel threatened. Vacate the seats because you have been riding on your privileges. And I'm not saying this out of anger or negativity, but I'm saying that when you start to be reflexive, which is what intersectional feminist lens, intersectional feminist uh, reflexivity gives us, that when you will start looking at unpacking your privileges, you will say, if these privileges have given me benefit, I might use my voice, but if they are using their own voice, it would be wise if I take a step back too. Amplification is one strategy and taking a step back could be also another strategy. And the challenges that uh, are is that interpersonally, individually, people are spending time to talk about. And then you would have forged friendships. But, you know, structurally, it's not happening. Academic institutions, uh, departments of uh, gender studies, women's studies are still headed by, in the academic uh, context, headed by mainstream upper caste women uh, Feminists, uh, organizations, NGOs, international and national NGOs within India are headed by upper caste uh, women. And with regard to the issues, are there a lot of interfaces of the issues of Dalit feminism and upper caste feminism? Yeah, what are the differences? What is happening in the upper caste spaces now is that there is always this upper lens downward. The issues that NGOs take up, they will invariably take up issues of poor women who (laughs) happen to be the lower caste women. So they will conveniently target a population that is will be defined as poor and not engage with the nuances enough of the caste nuances. So upper caste feminist circles, NGOs and academics would be having a savior hat on. There is a problem there. The issues that Dalit women are taking up currently uh, are varied. Uh, And like, you know, there have been series like right from the 90s NGOs that emerged on Dalit women. They had to, first of all, uh, work a lot on atrocities and violence that was taking place, but also reaffirm that we can also speak. We can also stand up for ourselves. So they have this dual responsibility of fighting the victimization that takes place and to Stand up and say that we are strong and we are courageous because you don't call us strong and courageous. You are only looking at us as victim. Victimization takes place. We have to fight for it. But you know, our strength is there. And you have to position yourself as a strong person constantly. Yeah. Because to to counter that argument of victim, but that strength, I should not have to use that strength for my survival. My survival should be just survival. I should be surviving and thriving. But the society, the oppressive structures do not allow a Dalit woman. So their issues uh, that they are fighting for are of atrocities, violence, creating mechanism to educate, to mobilize, you know, because mobilization and education are the only ways with which we are able to come thus far. I heard the notion of Brahmanic patriarchy yes. from the side of Dalit feminists. Can you explain how you see the difference between, let me call it Dalit patriarchy and Brahmanic patriarchy? I will first of all say that I disagree like many of my uh, Dalit sisters would, Antika sister would disagree with the term Dalit patriarchy. You know, there are many, many manifestations of patriarchy in India, uh, which the root is Brahminical patriarchy. And I'll come to it uh, and define what Brahminical patriarchy. But first, I want to really uh, refute that there is no such thing as Dalit patriarchy. There is patriarchy in the communities because that structure has taken roots everywhere. So Brahminical patriarchy is within this hierarchy. How do you maintain the caste hierarchy? How do you create such a robust system, which is so illogical, you maintain it by controlling women's sexuality. For the caste purity to work, basically what was the recipe to maintaining caste was endogamy, was marrying within your caste. In the lower segments of the society, 
had more egalitarian ways of dealing you know there were freedom of divorces there were freedom of marriage they, they were the rules were much more looser because they had egalitarian history so to say but patriarchy nevertheless seeps in and we have a big challenge in anti caste communities to in dalit communities patriarchy executed in various forms by controlling the woman and uh, not acknowledging when she is talking and standing up for her so that challenge there is there but i would not define it as dalit patriarchy yes. would you say nowadays there is a dalit feminist movement in india yes. and what role do social media play in this yes so it is quite interesting that a senior activist from maharashtra uh, chaya kubra gade she tells me that you know we've been working in these spaces for decades she has been running an organization for 25 years and she says every time we enter an intellectual space we are asked is there a dalit feminist movement dalit feminist movement dalit women's uh, activism is very much alive and it is in all the spaces that i uh, spoke of earlier be it in the grassroots be it in the slums in their micro uh, mobilizations be it in the political movement be it religious spaces that they mobilize together in the university spaces young students women that are using digital platforms very actively and very creatively in those spaces like digital activism these are the diverse spaces in which dalit feminist movement is alive is flourishing is asking critical questions so social media has a very very important role to play although as you would know the digital divide is there the surveillance state is there digital space is not all this very uh, happy place either it has its own oppressive street system in place so they are uh, online and offline in both spaces are operating in very divided terrains but social media allows them to be in the back alleys to create these uh, groups micro groups or be it twitter accounts be it uh, i'll give you an example uh, in uttar pradesh a gang rape happened uh, of a valmiki uh, community girl the state uttar pradesh is a very fascist right wing state her dead body was burnt by the police a lot of movement this was covid time so a lot of online movement offline protests took place and as a result of that um, a lot of us about 250 dalit adivasi vimukta trans folks we came together and we formed a whatsapp group called dalit uh, dbav uh, women's collective and in this in this collective space we've been able to foster so many collaborations actual platform 250 of us we wouldn't have been physically able to meet due to lack of resources so this becomes a proxy for us our offline activism continues in the forms of our art writing in the forms of uh, on the ground protests in the forms of lobbying and advocacy and also this virtual space becomes an additional uh, plays an additional role another very interesting um, group that i i am so happy to talk about is uh, this grassroots journalist mostly of dalit communities in uttar pradesh who are writing in regional language their own regional local dialects and they walk to the spaces where atrocities or injustice has taken place and report it the platform is called khabar laheria and they've been existing for over 20 years now uh, there is a documentary film uh, being made uh, about these uh, journalists local grassroots dalit journalists and it's uh, uh, nominated for oscar uh, is called writing with fire they got smartphones and they use their smartphones to document to create archivals of injustices and atrocities and writing with that fire and you know a lot of us writers have been connected through virtual twitter platform instagram and so on so it's a new age technology used very creatively let me come to my last question are there links to the black life matters movement because recently i saw a, a, a slogan that it life yeah that it life matters yeah so there is a there, there is a very long history again in dalits looking at black movement so we had dalit panther for example in the 70s which took inspiration from the civil rights movement and black uh, panthers movement 
and we say that we understand the roots roots of oppression and we, we are also using uh, that similar argument to say that it lies matter yes thank you very much swati for this conversation and for the insights you gave us into Dalit feminism and this Dalit feminist thinking. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. Speak Up. Eine Produktion des Redaktionsnetzwerks Südasien. Speak Up. A production by the Editorial Network South Asia.